you write in the book um, is kind of like a mystique, the, the manuscript of the Emekanetziv. So who holds that manuscript? Um, you talk about limited access to it. What, what's the story behind that uh, manuscript story? Yeah, it's my Indiana Jones story. Um, uh, <laughs> um, th this story is simply, you know, as I was in this process of trying to verify that this was the earliest thing that he wrote, um, I needed to try and get my hands on the actual manuscript um, because, you know, one of the great lessons I learned from from Dr. Chaim Soloveitchik as an undergrad, you know, was that that you can't take for granted that a book, that a printed work is what it purports to be. Um, and especially a printed work that was printed in the, in the 1950s, you know, that was clearly written, you know, almost 100 years earlier. Who knows what else could have gotten in there, whether what purports to be the writing of the Nativ is actually the writing of the Nativ. And, and much, much of that can't be verified without actually getting your hands on a manuscript. So um, I, that, was a, that was a major goal of mine. Um, and through various connections, um, I was, you know, Rav Zvulun Kharlap was a big help uh, in, in, in that process. I was able to track down the manuscript as being held by descendants of the Nitziv, um, in who lived in the Gula neighborhoods of, uh, you know, Yerushalayim. There was a, there's a yeshiva, I don't even know if it's still around today, but it was called, um, you know, Yeshiva's Falaj in Yerushalayim, that they were still, these are the descendants through of Rafael Shapiro. Rafael Shapiro married the daughter of the Nitziv. Rafael Shapiro's daughter marries Chaim Soloveitchik. Um, uh, you know, the, the, um, uh, so that's that's the tree of the of the family that has his manuscripts in their possession, um, and they were good enough to allow me to to come and, and see. Um, I think we had very different expectations as to what was going to happen during that meeting or series of meetings. I you know I was a young graduate student at the time. I left my wife for the first time for a you know for a prolonged period of time to come to Israel. Uh, hoping that I was going to sit with these manuscripts for a number of days and work my way through them um, and, you know, and be able to determine what pieces seem to have been. You know, there, there are multiple strands in this manuscript. You can see what's his earlier writing, what he added in afterwards, see if there was anything that was added by others um, by looking at changes in, 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 in handwriting. So I, I did get in to see them. The problem is that when, when they let me in, I was seated at a table. The manuscript, there were two other people at the table. Uh, there was this Rosh Hashiva of Yeshiva Svalash in Yerushalayim. There was, I believe it was his uncle. Um, uh, they had the manuscript in front of them. And they wanted, they said to me, so what do you want to see? I'm like, well, what do I want to see? I, I don't want to see it all. I mean, that's what I was there to do. This is a three volume work. And I was really, I was, I was intending to sort of sit there, you know, happily at their living room, you know, at their dining room table, but to sit there and work through these various texts, and it was very clear to me very on that that was not their conception of what was going to happen here, but rather I was going to tell them a particular passage that I wanted to see, and they were going to look at it, and then they were going to pass it over to me if they got their, you know, their approval that I could look at it. And, um, you know, that was, a, that was a big disappointment for me. Um, I, I did get to see it. I did get to see certain pieces. I got to see that they were very guarded around this manuscript. Um, and I think particularly because of some of the citations that are in there, some of, so for example, the, the citation of, um, of Mendelssohn, which does not, you would never know that that's what it is in the printed text. Um, because it's a, it's a, um, an abbreviation where one letter of the abbreviation is the wrong letter. And uh, you, so it, it, it says, um, um, uh, Moshe, it, the, the, the uh, um, abbreviation is, um, actually it doesn't, it doesn't even say Moshe. It says, Perush, um, Perush Aleph, uh, Im, um, uh, Sorry, it's 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 Chumash Taf Aleph. So Chumash Taf Aleph im um, im Perush. Uh, oh, sorry, 
im Perush uh, something me bet ayin samech aleph. Um, uh, point is, that it's it's corrupted there in the printed text. The, the word is actually desau, not besau, um, and the reference is clearly to to the to um, most most medals in parish on Chumash. And if you look up the place in you know in in his parish, it's exactly talking about what the Nitzvah is talking about there. But that citation is underlined in pink in the um, in the manuscript, so they know that it was there. Right. They, they were certainly aware of that. Um, and I think there was a little bit of, you know, of, of fear over what I would do with this text and what it might do to the to the image and the, the legacy of the um, of the Nitzvah if I you know, spread it too far. And so, unfortunately, I got to glimpse at a couple of pages. They were nice enough, actually, to make a copy of a few of the pages for me. So just so that I could be able to explain how you know, what the text looked like and how he clearly changed and edited his text over over the years, but uh, there was a lot I didn't get to see, unfortunately. Right. Well, we we can go on and on. I think our time sure. is is up again. Um, the, the the pillar from the Talis Vihuda Berlin, the world of nineteenth century Lithuanian Torah scholarship, Rabbi Dr. Pearl. This has been absolutely fascinating, and again, urge our viewers and listeners to simply go on and and uh, and purchase the book and um, thank you so much for your time it's really most appreciated thank you thanks for having me okay. take care